Hello, everyone, and uh, peace of Christ to all of you. <clears throat> Please invite your friends and let us have a good time together, trying to think together and try to figure out how people and human beings they think. You know, uh, we made a video a few hours ago, and the video was called "What Is the Islamic Logic to Reject the Trinity?" If you remember, I don't know how many of you did uh, join. Uh, we have only five thousand because uh, this account is new to many and. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you keep saying to, to people that, hey, we are in this account, not in the other account, still they are lazy to come. But it doesn't matter. 5,000 is a blessing from the Lord. It's actually a big number, not a small. I will be happy if it's only 12. That doesn't matter really. But for me, I like to share my information as much as I can with as many as I can, and that makes me more happy. Absolutely true. Now, if we go and see the comments, which... Uh, you know, you see, if you want to know a person from inside, see his logic. <clears throat> the logic of a man or a woman speak of who is this person. All right. So when when we read the uh, you know some answers, as an example here in front of us, CP images of God. Your philosophy is self-destructive. You claim that the Christians do not uh, do do it in love for God. You see, I mean, some people they have, I don't know what kind of food they uh, eat. No, this is not what I said. And I did not say the Christians, they do that. You are silly and you are stupid. Sorry to say so. I said those who do that, because this is not the Christians doing that. This is some of the Christians doing that. Those who do that, they are doing something against God teaching where he says, don't make any image of God as in heaven or down in earth or even in the sea and I said if you have a memory but I guess you don't they are doing sin but in fact that doesn't make them more sinner than me because this is what happened in the world of hypocrisy let us say there's a Christian who have an icon and even he pray in the front of that icon and I believe that this is wrong but that doesn't make him bad that make him a good person who's praying to the Lord but yet he is doing something bad during, let us say, the practice. But he's not a bad person. Me, myself, I commit sin and I'm a sinner. So you are saying to me that because he have, a, have an image, he is a bad person, he will go to hell. Well, God, he forgave the one who, you know, commit adultery. God, he forgave the one who killed people. Paul himself used to go after the Christians to kill them. So you are trying in your logic. To say that Paul, who used to go after the Christian to kill Christians, it's okay, and God forgive him. But the poor Christian, the poor farmer, the poor villager, the, the, the beautiful person in that person who prayed to God in the front of an image, he will go to hell. Even though he don't mean the image, he mean God. You see, those who have icons, they are not a praying to images they are praying to God because all of them they knew that this is an image you can take it you can rip it off however this is still against the command of the Lord but all of us we break the command of the Lord so look what people they do they throw rocks at those who do bad but yet they are doing good which means the icon can be something not right to do but they are praying to the Lord and they love the Messiah from all their heart. So they are good people. You like it, you don't, they are. And here, you know, at the end of the day, uh, look what this guy, he said, just to show you the stupidity of people. You don't blame them. So you see their, their good nature. What about Hindus? You see the Bible is speaking clearly that the one who prayed to another God. So it is not about you pray or you don't. It's not about you praying what words, it's about you praying to who. So this is very silly of you, and you are an immature person for sure. You see how, how people are, you know, silly? At the end of the day, there's only one Savior. If I pray to the Messiah in front of an icon, or if I pray without an icon, I'm praying to the Messiah anyway. So for me, an icon, if it's a piece of art, I have no problem with it. If it's a piece of history, I have no problem with it. If it's a documentary, like because, you know, uh, uh, art can be very good way, actually, to document uh, events happen in the, in, the, in the past. Actually, they are more powerful than even writing. 
uh, because it give you more details so it's like as they say one picture is better than a million words so it's what it's meant you see when somebody kills somebody there's something called murder and there's something called he killed but it, both of them they killed let us say I'm driving my car and I hit a man and he died I killed him but this is not a murder so you are very silly with your logic because you are not mature even though I killed but killing from killing is different there's a there's a person who killed to kill and there's a person he don't want to kill anyone but it happened so we as a Christian at the end of the day we have only one Savior and the one who saved us is the Messiah and if you pray to other one other than the Messiah then you are no Christian as simple as that someone saying we use icon <clears throat> Because Jesus came in the form of a man that isn't that's not an excuse my friend excuse me This is not really a good excuse. So what if, if Jesus came in the form of a man? First of all, you don't even have his icon. You don't have his picture secondly You don't have a picture of Mary. You don't have pictures of the saint, but yet you make pictures and Jesus and the disciple they never said make a picture of us do, 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 do they did Paul say make an image of me? Did Peter say so Did John did so? So, you know, this is all is a tradition Have nothing to do really with the Bible teaching But always if we want to justify something we will find a reason to justify it. Don't worry I can justify killing. I can justify prostitution. I can justify drugs. I can justify human being is very good in justifying But you need to ask yourself one question Did Jesus or any of the disciples say it make images for us? And if they did not say or did so so why you do so? Are we listening, guys? Somebody saying more Catholic pray to the saints than pray to Jesus in time of need. That's not a true, my friend. When you pray to the saint, even the you see, people do not know the Bible. You ask the saint to pray for you. This is what the Bible is teaching. So don't 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 misquote and don't be silly. People are naive, deep people are silly. Even I heard somebody saying the Catholic they pay for the dead. Who is the dead? They say the saint. But is it the Bible says when the when the Messiah he resurrected from the grave from the tomb, the saints came back with him, so they are alive. All the saints resurrected with him. I mean, people are silly; they do not know what is written in their book, and yet they claim that they have knowledge and they have big mouth. People who pray, and the word "pray," by the way, have many meaning in the Bible because we are talking about the Hebrew, not the English you translate. So I pray. That you pray for me. I pray that you pray for me. Does that mean I'm praying to you that you're God? No. Are you getting my point? How many times you heard the Christian minister saying, pray for me? What does that mean? So I pray to that the saint will pray for me which means the saint will ask the Lord with me to save me or to forgive me so all the prayer at the end of the day is goes to the Lord we don't pray to the saint and even somebody will say to you that the Catholic they pray to Mary no they don't pray to Mary they ask Mary to pray for them don't lie don't lie they say to her pray for us we are the sinners so Mary herself, she have to pray to Jesus, so Jesus might forgive them. People, they always say silly stuff, and they don't think about what they are talking about. And I, you know, me, I am not a Catholic, and not, not an Orthodox, and I am not a Protestant. And I don't care what the name of your church you go to, I care for the truth. So, images is very clear, is against the teaching of the Bible, where God, he said, with the clear words, Make not images for what is in the sky or down on earth. As simple as that. Bingo. And the images here is about something, anything have to do with God. Which means you want to make images for uh, art? Make images. This is your business. 
you want to take a picture for you for your ID or your family no this is this is fine but if you want to make images in the purpose of ritual or purpose of religion or belief that is not right and Jesus never saved you know guys did Jesus what he was when he met with the with his disciple before the crucifixion he said do this to remember me anyone anyone remember what he said uh, what he's what he did do this to remember me What he said did, did he say make an image of me? Did he say make an icon? Did he say make a picture? No He broke a bread He took the drink. He said this is my body will be broken for you and This is my blood and do this to remember me He did not ask you to make images he never made an image. You know, at the time of Jesus, by the way, the, the, the Greek is all over around them, and the Greek are very good in, 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 in art. So it's very easy to make an image of Jesus, and they are professional to the point they will make it look exactly as the person. Actually, right now as we speak, you can go many places, you will see a person, he will, he will, he will draw you, and it will look like as if it's taken by a camera, if it's really, really, really you. So it's very easy in the time of Jesus to make an images for Jesus, but Jesus never did that, and none of the disciples did that. So please remember this. Making images have nothing to do with, with the teaching of God. This is the tradition. And I say it, and I say again, people who do it because they love God, I believe they will be forgiven because God even forgive those who kill if they repent. God who forgive those who commit adultery if they repent. So what about God? He forgave those who did something wrong, but because they love him and they hurt nobody. Now, we go to our topic. <clears throat> we have a person here, he said, and you see, you see, this is why I decided to go live on air. He said, God is not a trinity. Who said so? God is one okay who said that God is one doesn't mean that God is a Trinity in the same time you see how just to show you that the one who made this comment is immature look what he said God is not a Trinity look like this guy he do not know what Trinity mean Trinity does not mean that God is a three <laughs> still God is one so when he said God is one not a tree that's mean he's an idiot because none of the Christians believe that God is a three God is one are we listening so when somebody says something to you you have to be very careful about what he say and get him busted immediately because the world is full of people who they are immature not necessarily he's trying to deceive you but maybe he himself is an idiot this this earth is full of idiots because this is not what christianity teach christianity does not teach that god is a three or three god we the trinity is god in three person okay uh, uh, you know when somebody says okay god is not a three person who who said so are you telling God what he can be what he cannot what if God he is a 1,000 person you will tell God don't be I, I like you to be uh, the way I want so God he is or called Almighty so if God cannot be what he is then he cannot be God when a Muslim he says to me that his God is one and then we check out in his books we find that there is no way that his God is one because even the God of Islam always speak about himself in a plural world trying to copy what is written in the Bible like when the Bible says Elohim why God is saying Elohim if he is just one person Elohim is a plural word it's not a singular when God of Islam he says we okay Allah is one so why he say we the Muslim they say he is calling himself as majestic will do God need to make himself majestic equal to a king that is silly so God he became majestic by adding we 
so now he is copying the false corrupt kings because what will make me majestic is me being God not me saying we you know what I mean if the we will make me God okay I Christian Prince I say we from now on that is silly Then the guy he said, Father and Son, not Father is Son. And nobody says Father is. I mean, this guy is an idiot. What is this guy? This guy is look like Muhammad who think that the Trinity is Mary and Jesus and Allah. Who is the Christian who believe that Father is the Son? <laughs> we don't. So what this guy is talking about? Those people, they just contradict themselves. Look what he said. God in Christ, not God is a Christ. God in Christ, not God is a Christ. Hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, some people, they have really, they, I, mean, I think you need to change your oil. If we go to the book of John right now, What we will find in the book of John, first chapter, verse number one. In the beginning was the, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, who is this word? Who is that word? It is Jesus. Hmm? Do you know how to read? And the word was made the flesh and dwelled among us. Who was the word? The word was God. What the word become or came to us? As a flesh of a man so where you get this saying that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God what's wrong with those people so if we look for evidence where it says that Jesus is God it's all over the Bible and the funny the Muslim they say to you where Jesus has said I am God worship me <clears throat> and we have tons of verses Jesus saying that but Jesus saying that does not make him God because I can say that too. So if a Christian prince says, I'm God, worship me. So does that mean that Jesus, a Christian prince, is God? Silly argument. What makes Jesus God is not him saying, worship me. It's him doing the act of God. Like what? The Bible says that the Son, the Son is the image of, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. I mean, how clear more we want to, to, to have in the Bible words saying that Jesus is God. He is the visible image of the invisible God. Still they say to you, well, the Bible did not say that Jesus is God. Okay, hold on. Let us see. Different story. <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, the Muslim they say, well, the Jews don't have a trinity. By the way, the word trinity is, is something, uh, let us say, to summarize what the Christians believe. It's not exist really as a word. I mean, what, what a trinity? It, when you say trinity, it's just to define who believe in one God, three person, and who don't. As simple as that. Otherwise, we do not need the word Trinity. The same as the Muslim when he say Tawheed. If we, just, if, we, if we look in the whole Quran, we will not find the word Tawheed. Can we find the word Tawheed in the Quran? No, Tawheed in the Quran. Actually, the word Tawheed means unification. 
So how you believe in one God, but yet you believe in unify, unifying gods? Because the second you say, I believe in Tawheed, you just said, I believe in unification. If you go right now to the Arabic dictionary, and Arabic is my first language, not my second, not my third. Tawheed means unification. You know, you can make a sentence right now, Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiya, unification of Ar Arabian states. It's like you're saying, United States of America. This is what Tawheed means. <laughs> United so if Allah is one how you say even the word of hate but because they are silly They are copy and they are paste so the word Trinity is more accurate as definition But we do not need it as a belief which mean God in three person is What we believe in Trinity is just a definition in English to tell people what is our belief? So instead of saying who I am, what I believe in, I say I believe in Trinity. As simple as that. Otherwise, in the Bible, we don't have the word Trinity written as a Trinity. And we do not need it. But look what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water so from verse number two the second statement of god speaking to us about what he did he is saying that he's there's god and his spirit do you see it <clears throat> do you see it people the spirit of god This is the beginning of the Bible. And yet they say to you, where in the Bible it says there is God and there is a spirit. And now where is where is where is God is a, is a man? <coughs> Actually, the Bible in the Old Testament says God is not a man. But the Bible says God is not a man who lie, not just God as not a man. So the Muslim they quote for you. Something from the Bible, but they cut off the rest of the sentence and Jesus never lie And Jesus never commit sin Otherwise we can show you tons of verses about God Coming as a man in the Old Testament as an example did God came to Abraham as a man. Yes, he does He did What Jesus says about God coming to Abraham. If we go in the Bible in chapter in John chapter 8, we will find this story. Where Yeshua was speaking to the Jews. And you see here the story. In John chapter 8 you try maybe maybe you can uh, open your uh, uh, <clears throat> your Bible from your side and you can read with me so you can see what I'm talking about for those who like to read more clear uh, uh, text because sometimes if you are using a phone maybe uh, the text is not clear enough to to be able to read so if we go and read what is written in chapter in John chapter 8 and this is goes by the way this the challenge here is goes for those who they are claiming to be people who believe in Jesus like Jehovah's Witnesses or those who claim to be Christian but yet they don't believe in the Trinity or those who they are Muslims who they say to us where Jesus says I'm God when Jesus he went to the mountain And he was speaking in the yard of the temple. The people came to him to teach as he used to do. And those rabbis they came to. And there was a woman who had been sized for adultery. And then they stood her in the midst. They were saying to him, teacher, this woman was taken openly in act 
of adultery. But in the written law of Muslims, he commands that we shall stone such thee in such an act, such a woman. What therefore you say? So the Jews now they are trying to play games, they want to see what Jesus will say about this. Okay, Jesus, here we go. You are the one who speak that you are the one who knows everything, you are the one who teach us, and you are the one who claim to be what you claim to be. What do you want to do about this? They said as we're tempting him so it looks like it's like a challenge what you what you would do what what this it is, it's like you know it's like a test to see what his decision is going to be his decision as is written in the book or maybe he is not a person who believe in that book so we can use it against him so that might have something for which accuse him so the purpose is not really to ask him they want to kill the women anyway but they wanted to find a reason to accuse him of something but Yeshua Yeshua was stopping writing in the ground so Yeshua was writing something in the ground but they persist asking him they continue saying like well, so what, what is the solution what do you think then he stood up and he says he among you without sin let him first cast a stone upon her so Jesus did not say, oh, I don't believe in the law. Oh, I'm not the one who made the law. Oh, forget about Moses. Oh, forget about the Old Testament. No, 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 he did not say that. He said something no one ever expected to be said. Something they themselves, they, they, they could not believe that he come with such an answer. He among you, who without sin let him first cast a stone upon her and by the way this is what we see every day when we say somebody is a christian but he have an icon of mary the every everyone want to cast a stone at him oh you are kafir they are the same muslims you know they act the same as muslim the same as the jews in the time of jesus hypocrite people all of them they are sinners but yet the guy he have just an icon we want to kill him for it he is not a christian no more just because he's an icon you see the hypocrisy how it work here we go. It is so clear in the Bible that God, he command that you don't commit adultery. This is from the command was given to Moses. There's no question about it. And the command too, that the one who command, who do adultery have to be punished. Yet those who practice the commands, they are a bunch of hypocrites. They want to stone everyone except themselves. And this is what we see today from those who claim to be Christians or Jews or Muslims, etc. Everyone play that he is the perfect person, he don't commit sin, and let us stone this person. Do you understand, guys, what I'm saying? This is why when I was speaking about those who have images, I said, well, yes, it's wrong to do that, but that does not make them more sinner than me, if you remember my previous video, correct? Even if that's sin, but that does not make them more sinner than me. And the problem, we don't read the Bible, Jesus said, before you see the little thing in the eyes of your brother, go and see that big tree in your eyes. And this is what those who claim to be religious always do. They see the little thing in your eye, but they have the biggest tree ever in their head, not only in their eye. It's a tree coming with the branches, but they don't see it. Oh, we are religious. Oh, we are the rabbis. Oh, we are the priest. Oh, we are holy. Almost they are making themselves equal to God. Don't listen to those people. The disciple of Jesus, they confess their sin and they ask God for forgiveness. So how anyone can be better? Then we continue the story. So he said, he among you who is without sin, let him cast a stone upon her. So he did not say don't cast the stones. He said, no, go, go. 
cast a stone but don't forget if you are not a sinner to cast a stone if you're a sinner why you cast a stone you're like her what happened in a moment everybody notice we shame that they are a bunch of hypocrites and they don't have the right to stone this woman and he's stopping down again and he wrote on the ground but when he this here heard those people they heard what he said uh, they were exciting but one by one beginning from the elders and the women who had been in the midst was left alone but when he stood up Yeshua said to the women where are they who are they those who want to stone you has no man condemned you but she said not even one Lord God do you see guys the word Lord God not even one Lord God now you know the women she said that not Jesus so a Muslim can say well this is the women saying that correct they will say okay Jesus did not say he is Lord God the women said that but did Jesus say why you call me Lord God did he say don't call me that look what he said and Yeshua said neither do I condemn you go and sin no more a Muslim will come to you and will scream where Jesus says I'm God worship me he did if somebody call me God and I agree with him I don't correct him that's mean I am claiming to be God as simple as that and look there's nobody there except him all this crowd the crowd who came to stone her and maybe the disciple of Jesus they are watching and this woman and she is talking only to him he is the one who said to her where are they has no man condemned you but she said not even one Lord God then look what the Messiah Yeshua he said and Yeshua is spoken again with them and he said I am the Living God the light of the world the Messiah did not say nowhere that he is God this is what the Muslim they say to us I am the Living God the light of the world whoever follow me whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall find the light of life and then the Pharisee they said to him you are testifying about yourself which means you are saying that you are God and this is the proof that you are God by saying that you see the Muslims exactly what I said to you if Jesus said he is God this is not enough it's not enough to anyone to say I'm God otherwise anyone can say I'm God and worship me so the Jews they said to him exactly you are testifying about yourself your testimony is not true <coughs> your testimony is not accepted right Yeshua answered and said to them even if I testify about myself my testimony is not a true because I know from where I have come and where I am going but you do not know from where I have came or come and where I am going you are judging you know uh, you have a judgment on me but I'm judging no one but even I if I do judge 
my judgment is true because I am not alone who is with Jesus he's not alone but I and my father who sent me Jesus saying that he is not alone he and the father is together and in your written law is written the testimony of two men is it true I am the living God I who testify about myself and my father who sent me has testified about me so here we go we are two you want to you want to this is two person I and the father testify about me they were saying to him you, you <laughs> Where, where is your father? What? Where is your father? Yeshua said, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. He spoke those words in the treasury as he taught in the temple. In the tre treasury, yes. And then he says, and no man sized him for he the, his hour had not yet to come so why the Jews did not uh, take him cut him yet uh, because they want to suppose he will be killed, be killed for saying such a statement because his time did not come yet so Jesus because Jesus said who nobody can take me I lay my down I lay down myself Yeshua spoke again to them I am moving and you will seek me and you will die in your sin and where I am going you cannot come look how deep the statement of Jesus where I'm going you cannot come you will die you will die with your sin and where you are going where I am going you cannot come which mean your end is different from where I'm going you will not be with me the Judans were saying Will he kill himself? Will he now kill himself? Because they could not understand what he's saying. Why? What is? What do you mean? You will die, and I'm going, and you will not be with me. So look what they are thinking. Look how shallow they are. This is a very good example of how many shallow people we see around us today. Because he had said, "Where I am going, you cannot come." He did, so where he will go, and he said to them. You are from below. I am from above. Look at this. Jesus saying, look at yourself. You will die with your sin and you will go and I will go. But where I go, you cannot come with me. For you are a sinner, you are a bad person. For you are from below. I am from above. The Messiah is saying he is from above. Who is a Muslim can explain to me how the Messiah is from above? Any Muslim can tell me? How the Messiah, because the Muslim, they say he is just a human being, right? Uh, correct? This is what they say. He's just a man like everybody. Okay. Well, Jesus, he said, I am from above. Yeah, free. Uh, Muhammad Qasim is warning you. You will leave Islam soon. This, you are listening to Christian Prince. Actually, Muhammad Qasim is already out of Islam. This guy, he come here just to, you know, he's already out. I can't tell. Now, let me show you that we can prove that Jesus is not from below. He is from above, even from the Quran, from the yellow pages of Muhammad. If we go in the Quran and the yellow pages of Muhammad, we will find the following. The Quran in chapter 4, verse number 171, confirm that Jesus the Messiah, he was the word of God sent down to Mary.
Do you see it? Where is the word of God coming from? Muslims, where is the word of God coming from? Who is a Muslim have an answer? No, no, we are talking about them as as Muslims, not us. Not Don't say the father. This is the Muslim logic now. So for them, there is no father. There is Allah. So the word of God is coming from where, Muslims? If Jesus is the word of God, send down to Mary. Send down from where? Even the word in Arabic, it says al qaha <coughs> So Jesus, the Messiah, he was exist before he was a man as the word of God, according to the Quran. If you ask any Muslim, they will say to you, the word of God is not created. The Quran is not created. Well, Jesus is the word of God. I hope people, they will focus with me in my topic. Don't ask me silly questions. Christian Prince, are you going to go to the church today? I mean, are you sure? Do you think this is a, this is a mature question? My friend, this is my church. What are we doing here? Are we having fun? Are we playing games? Are we watching cartoon? I spend my whole day doing what I am doing. Are you asking me when you want to go to the church? Think, open your mind, use your brain. This is a question you say to somebody, he do nothing with the Bible all, all the week, not to me. So the Quran confirmed that Jesus is the word of God and what was his name before he became a man? Do you know what was his name? His name is the Messiah. The Messiah, his name is the Messiah before he was born. Read it. Chapter 3, verse number 45. And remember when the angel said, O oh Mary, Allah give you gl glad tiding of word from him who is his name is the Messiah. He have a name already. He's not born yet. He's just a word now. Yet he have a name. His name is the Messiah. We go back to the Bible. I am from above, you are from below. But Jesus will make it more clear for us, not like the silly Quran, where Quran, you know, Quran is like a copy paste of some words from here and there, and you have to struggle to find out what this guy trying to say. Look what Jesus said. You are from below, I am from above. You are from this world. I am not from this world. Jesus denying that he is belong to this world. Do you see it? Not only he said, I am from I am from above, you are from below. No, no, no. He have nothing to do with this universe. This universe is created by him. He is not of it. He is the creator. Do you, see what is that? Do you see what does that mean? This word, Jesus is not from this word. You are from this word. And then I say it to you. 
that you shall die in your sin for unless you shall believe that I am the living God how clear the Messiah he can make it or he shall make it you shall die in your sin the Judah said we're saying who are you those guys they were saying like what he's saying who are you Yeshua said Yeshua said to them even though I have begun to talk with you there are many things for me to say and judge concerning you but he who has sent me is true and those things that I have heard from him these things I am speaking in the world and they did not know that he spoke into them about the father they don't know he spoke about who who is the one who heard him he spoke about them the one who sent him Yeshua spoke again to them when you have lifted up the Son of Man then you shall know that I am the living God and I do nothing of my own pleasure but just as my father has taught me those who say there's no Trinity explain to me what's happening he just said I am the living God <laughs> and he just said that he have a father <laughs> right they say to you where where in the Bible it says the Trinity where okay he just said I am the living God and he said that the father sent him so if he is living God and the father is God so then how you deny that there is something called the person of Jesus and the person of the Father and the person of the Holy Spirit and later we will go and go and see that the Holy Spirit so I am speaking and he and he who has sent me with me which mean the Messiah when he talk he is explaining to them that I am the visible image of the invisible God do you remember he is what he is the visible image of the invisible God you remember the verse the Bible is a book we have to connect the dots together we don't take only just one sentence and we make a story about it then we continue and my father has not left me alone because I am doing always what is beautiful to him and he was spoken speaking those things many trusted him which mean many believe and Yeshua said to the Judah who trusted him those the Jews who believe in him if you will continue in my word you are truly my disciple and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free amazing beautiful sentence in the Bible you will know the truth and look what the truth will do truth set you free free from deception free from stupidity free from immaturity free being from being slaves of lies you will be free as God wanted you to be and they were saying to him we are the seeds of Abraham you never have uh, uh, and, and never have we served in the bondage of to, to a man how do you say you shall be my the children of Liberty they are asking him how you say that Yeshua said to them time the truth I speak to you 
whoever commits sin is a servant of sin and a servant does not always remain in the house but the son always remain to make it simple Adam commits sin Adam is out of the house which means sin bring death the one who commits sin he is a servant of sin if the son therefore will set you free who will set them free the son you will truly be children of liberty the truth will set you free I know you are the seed of Abraham but you seek to kill me because you cannot comprehend my words the Messiah he says to them I know I know that you are from the children of Abraham I know but that will not change the fact that you are sinners and you want to kill me because you cannot handle the truth which I'm giving you you cannot comprehend my words I'm speaking the things that I have seen with my father the Messiah he claimed by saying that that he saw the father you are doing the things that you have seen with your father so I do what I seen from my father you do what you seen from your father they answered and they were saying to him Abraham is our father Yeshua said to them if you were the children of Abraham you would have been doing the work of Abraham but now behold you are seeking to kill me so if you are children of Abraham why you want to kill me why are children of Abraham want to kill me why don't do the work as your, your father I am a man who have spoken the truth with you a Muslim he would say do you see Jesus said I am a man but Jesus said many time already I am the living God so yes he is the living God who is upcoming as a man I am a man who have spoken the truth with you which I have heard from God the Messiah here a Muslim would say see the Messiah here the word from God go a few lines up you will see he said I am the living God so the Jews they are wondering okay he's a man he looked like a man he stand in front of him as in the flesh of a man so where is the authority from so he's explaining to them that everything I'm saying to you is coming from God don't just judge me by being the man the father who is in me the word of the father me and the father is the one is talking to you Yeshua to said to them I am a man who have spoken the truth with you which I have heard from God this is Abraham did not do this Abraham did not do but you are doing the deeds of your father they were saying to him we are not from fornication we have one father God here the Muslims or some people they say to you how come the Jews don't believe that they have God the Father no they believe as you see the Jews they believe in the Father as God Yeshua said to them if God were your father you should have loved me for I have a proceeds proceeded from God and I have not yet uh, have not come to my own pleasure but he has sent me and why do you not understand my words it because you cannot hear my words you are from your father the devil the Messiah now is getting harsh on them saying that the father has nothing to do with you your real father is the devil and the desire of your father you are willing to do it this is why you want to kill me from the beginning he has been murdering men and does not stand the truth 
because there is no truth in him whenever he speak a lie he speak from what he is his because he is a, a, a falsehood and also it is father so you don't belong to Abraham you don't belong to the father to the God you belong to the devil but you are not believing in me I am I who uh, uh, I am speaking or uh, speaking uh, uh, the truth who among you is convicting me of sin look at this challenge I mean imagine I say to you who can prove me to be a sinner that would be crazy because everybody is a sinner Jesus saying to them I am sin free I am sin free and I speak and if I speak the truth why do not believe me whoever is from God hear God words therefore you are not hearing because you are not from God so what the Messiah is saying when God is speak to you and you refuse to hear it that's mean you are not from God that's why you did not hear him you decide not to be belonging to him the Jews answered and they were saying to him are we not saying correctly that you are Samaritan and have a demon on you they accuse him that he have a demon Yeshua said to them a demon is not in me but I honor my father and you dishonor me but I am not is seeking my glory there is one who seek and judge timeless truth I speak to you whoever keeps my word shall never see death look at this those Jews they are seeing a man and this man is claiming that the one who listened to him he never died the Jews saying to him now <laughs> you know what now you are saying to you were saying now we know that a demon is in you Abraham is dead and the prophet and you are saying whoever keeps my word shall never taste death so the Jews they are debating with Jesus saying what do you mean that the one who believe in you will not taste death all the even the prophets even our father Abraham is dead what are you talking about and look what Jesus said and they continue saying are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets who had died have died who are you making yourself look at the sentence this is very important Yeshua said <clears throat> if I glorify myself my glory is nothing it is my father who glorify me you remember our father is God God the father glorifying the Messiah so who is this Messiah to be glorified by God himself if he is just a man he whom you say he is our God he's quoting them myself would be a liar like you but I do know him and I keep his words Abraham your father desired to see my day and he saw it and he rejoiced the Messiah now claiming that he met with Abraham and Abraham he was praying to see him the word desire here that Abraham was praying this is a desire from Abraham to see the Lord so the Messiah is saying to them Will your father Abraham, the one you are so proud about him, he himself is a believer in me, and he desired to see my day, and when he saw me, he rejoiced. The Jews, they said to him, you are not yet a 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Yeshua said to them, timeless truth I speak to you, before Abraham would exist, I am the living God 
I skip one sentence no problem because I'm telling the story is not really I'm reading word by word so Yeshua said to them before Abraham existence I am exist Yet they say to you, where Jesus says, I am God, and where is the proof of the Trinity? Right? How clear it can be. How clear we can make it. In John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, it says, But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now. And I have been working. Look, the Father is working, and I am working. So the Father is working from eternity. Before time is exist. And I am working too. And is still working. Therefore the Jews thought all the more to kill him. Because not only he broke the Sabbath, but also that he... God was his father. He said that. And making himself equal with God. And this is the real reasons the Jews, they wanted to crucify Jesus. <laughs> Do you see it? But if somebody, you know, he decide not, you know, when, when Muslims, they debate you, they are not debating, really, they are just coming to argue. A Muslim, when he debate about an issue, he is not debating you because he believe in it, but because he is a blindly following Muhammad. If Muhammad said that Jesus is God, every Muslim will pray to Jesus. All the belief in Muhammadan is in the hand of one sentence from Muhammad, as simple as that. The proof of that, Muhammad, he said to them, Mary was virgin. Every Muslim believed that Mary is virgin. Have you ever heard of a Muslim arguing with you about Mary not being a virgin? They don't. Okay, why? Because Muhammad says so. Not because it's logical according to Islam. According to Islam, Mary being a virgin is not a logical at all. Because why Mary was virgin? Any Muslim can tell me. What is the point that Jesus is the son of a virgin? You tell me. Jesus is just a prophet according to Muslims, okay? Muhammad even greater than him according to Muslims, okay? So why Muhammad, the greater than Jesus according to Muslims, is not born as a, from a virgin who is, she is a pure? Muhammad in the Quran said, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسِ Those who they are infidels, we cannot say the pagans because Islam is a pagan too, Muhammad is a pagan. Those who they are not believing in him, infidelity here is about not to believe in Muhammad. Those who they are not believing in him, they are filthy, najis. What does that mean? Muhammad father and Muhammad mother are najis. They are not allowed to enter Mecca if they were alive. While Jesus is the son of Mary, and the one who made Mary have Jesus is God, which means the Messiah, according to Islam, is the fruits of God. It is a gift of God. How Messiah can be equal to Muhammad? Muhammad is a son of a pagan father, pagan mother. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Anyone? Who is a Muslim have something to say?
Nobody. Zero. <clears throat> Even Muhammad, he said, clearly, that the Messiah is the Word of God, and he is Ruhullah, the Spirit of Allah. There is only one person in the whole cult of Islam who was called the Spirit of Allah and the Word of Allah. Muhammad is not the Spirit of Allah and he is not the Word of Allah. If you go in the Hadith, you will, you will find this. <coughs> See if we can find the hadith. Uh, let us see. Yeah, this website sometimes is hard to find. Their search engine is really bad. Let us see. Hold on. I don't want to say something without showing it. <clears throat> Let us see this hadith. The first one we could not find. It's in the Kanzul Ummah, the first one. But we will see if we can find it in English. Here we go. We found this one. All right. <clears throat> Guys, read carefully with me. And this is the Muslim translation. You go better to Jesus, the Spirit of Allah and His Word. Do you see it? People, do you see it? You better go to who? You better go to Jesus. The Spirit of Allah and His Word. There is only one person in Islam. He is the Spirit of Allah and He is His Word. Why? Any Muslim can tell me why only Jesus is the Spirit of Allah and He is His Word? Any Muslim? Islam cannot be defeated. That is why they hide. Islam is defeated already a long time ago, my friend. You see, Islam is defeated since the time of Muhammad. Muhammad, he went to fight the Roman. He could not make it. Then the Caliphate was killed by Muslims one by one. Then Uthman, he burned the Quran. I mean, what more defeat you want? And now the Quran we have is a shish kebab hummus falafel. And Muhammad himself, he says that the majority of the judgment day from the Muslims, they are going to go to hell. And I can show you the hadith right now. So according to your prophet, Islam is defeated. Not only that, Muhammad, he says, Islam is started as a strange and will end as a strange, which means nobody believes in it. So look like you are saying your prophet, he cannot be a prophet. No, Islam will not end in 2020. Islam is ended since Muhammad died. What you see today is the oil revolution. This is the money of the oil. When the money is gone, 
Islam will be shish kebab hummus as it was before for the, for the last 14 centuries. This is the money of Saudi Arabia and the money of Qatar, the influence of the money. And if you say to me anything except my name, a Christian prince, I will ban you. I don't want your city and see a stupid text in the chat. Any Muslim? Any Muslim can tell us why the Messiah is the spirit of Allah? Do Allah even have a spirit? Anyone? Thank you, I care. Thank you. Any Muslim have an idea how Jesus is the spirit of Allah? And how he is the word of Allah. I thought he is just a man created by Allah. If if you and me and everybody created by Allah, that's mean all of us we are the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah. But as you see, only Jesus is the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah, and the proven in front of you. Muhammad never been called such a title. None of the Islamic prophet, which is raised many funny names because according to Muhammad, there's 124,000 prophet. So what is unique about Jesus to be the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah? Any Muslim? No answer. So Muhammad, because he is very, very mad person, when he speak to the Christians, Muhammad is like Obama. You know Obama? Obama, he go sit with the Muslim, he's a Muslim. He sit with the Jews, he wear their hat. He sit with the atheists, he make fun of the Bible. He sit with the Christians, he's a Christian. He sit with the gays, he's a gay. This is Obama. Muhammad is Obama. So Muhammad he adopt many things from a Christianity and one of the things of Christianity he adopt that Mary she is virgin Jesus is the son of the virgin and he is the word of God and yet he is a spirit of God in the same time which we cannot explain how Muhammad he come to this conclusion why they say that Jibreel is the Holy Spirit well there's nowhere in the Quran it says Jibreel is the Holy Spirit. But they they try to explain it, so they come to a, con it's a conclusion according to their understanding, but I cannot see it really to be exist. Now, if you say to me that the Messiah is the Spirit of Allah, how the Spirit of Allah die or will die? The Muslim they say at the end of the time the Messiah will die. The spirit of Allah will die. The word of Allah will die. Additional to that, we have a name which no Muslim can explain. His name is Al Masih. What does that mean? Muslims, Allah he called the Messiah the Messiah. Why he called him the Messiah? Is that a name he stole from the Bible or this is something mean something special? Any Muslim know? They don't know. They have no idea. Any Muslim would like to say something. So if you are a Muslim and you are listening, I wanna like I want you to take those questions with you to your scholar, and say, okay, is Muhammad is a spirit of Allah? They will say no. Is um, is Muhammad the word of Allah? They will say no. 
So who is the Messiah who is unique in everything? God is spirit is the Messiah. God words is the Messiah. The Messiah himself is a glory name. I mean, why his name is the Messiah? What is that? The Messiah is not the son of any man. None. Yet he is born. Why? The Messiah in the Quran, chapter nine, verse nine, chapter nineteen, verse nineteen, he is a holy son. Why he is holy? Muhammad in the Quran is a big time sinner. The Messiah in the Quran, he never die. He is right now in heaven listening to us. Why? Muhammad die, Abraham die, Moses die. So Islam is a collection of stupidity mixed together and give you a lot of confusion. So Muhammad says the Messiah is no one, yet the Messiah have no father. Yet the Messiah is holy. Yet the Messiah is the word of God. Yet the Messiah is the spirit of God. Yet the, yet the Messiah, he is not dead. Yet the Messiah is alive since 2000 years. Yet the Messiah will live God knows for how many thousand years to come. And yet the Messiah is the one who will kill shaitan. So what is the job of Allah? <laughs> what is the job of Allah if the, if the Messiah is the one who will destroy Satan? Any Muslim knows? This is the hadith about the Messiah is Ruhullah, the Spirit of Allah, and the Word of Allah for those who like to save reference. <coughs> In this hadith here, You will see that when Satan he come to meet the Messiah, Satan he will dissolve. Look at this. Certainly the time of a prayer shall come, and then Jesus, son of Mary, would descend. What? He would descend from where? From heaven. God's descend, angel descend, Jesus descend too? Yes, Jesus descend. And would lead them and when the enemy of Allah see him who is the enemy of Allah Satan supposedly when the enemy of Allah see him see him who Jesus he would disappear just as salt dissolve itself in the water you see this third the story When Satan he sees Jesus, he will be dissolved like salt. Not when he see Muhammad, not when he see Allah, not when he say James Bond, not when he say uh, Jibril. When he see Jesus, Satan will dissolve like salt. Can any Muslim tell me what is the power Jesus has? He is the one who bring victory. He is the one who will kill all evil, destroy evil. He is the one who will destroy Satan. And he is the one who, when Satan, he see him, he dissolved like salt. It's nothing, like it's not exist. They cannot explain to us. So this is why I say Islam is a collection of stupid, silly stories. And there's no, no meaning for them. I mean, this, look at this religion. They say Jesus is no one. And then, they, and then we see this. Jesus is just a prophet. Muhammad is the most honorable man. Muhammad is the most close to Allah. Allah and, and Allah, he wrote the name of Muhammad over his chair. I mean, Allah cannot sit in the chair unless his name Muhammad, Muhammad. Allah is sitting in the chair and now he's writing Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad. So Muhammad Rasulullah, but the one who will destroy Satan is Jesus. So what Muhammad job is? Having sex with women in heaven? Eat a zucchini? So what we understand from the cult of Islam that Jesus is holy, Jesus son of no man, Jesus is the word of God, Jesus is the spirit of God, Jesus is alive, and Jesus is still alive right now in heaven, and Jesus will descend, and Jesus when shaitan he see him he dissolve like salt, yet Jesus is no one. He's just a man, the prophet of God.
endless stupidity. How in the world this is can be from God? Whoever wrote this story is, is obviously confused. And I believe strongly. Muhammad, he mentioned those great stuff about Jesus for a reason. Anyone knows what the reason? Okay, hold on, Muhammad Qasim. I have to get my Skype on. My Skype is not on. <coughs> All right. Skype is logging in. All right, Qasim, you can call me now. Go ahead. <coughs> All right, a missed call from Qasim. Let us see what's your name. Here we go. I will call you. <coughs> Skype is logging in. All right, Qasim, you can call me. Mute you too, please. Yeah, hello. Yes, Hassan, go ahead. Yes. So the hadith you stated, um, I just wanted to point out a mistake or uh, an error or or the lie you just did. So in the hadith you quoted, it doesn't say Satan melts when Jesus appears. What it says? It doesn't say Satan. Well, who, is, who is he? Who is this one who disappear? It's the Jal. Okay, it says the enemy of Allah. Is the enemy of Allah the, the Jal and Satan is one person or they are two different persons? Uh, the two different people so Allah now have one enemy or two enemies so um, the Satan is the enemy of Allah and there's also um, okay so how you came to the conclusion that this is the Dajjal it says here only the enemy of Allah will appear how you came to the conclusion this is the Dajjal because other hadith they mentioned that this is Dajjal okay you, let you me ask you as long as you are the one who said this guys did he say that the Dajjal is there well, one from shaitan did you say that yeah of course okay who is the dajjal the one you call him dajjal dajjal is um what do you mean do you, are you asking him about his nature or i'm asking you who is he a dajjal he's um um he's going to be against jesus when, when this, jesus uh, 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 i'm not asking you who's going to be against who and why he will be against jesus I, I thought he's against allah yeah he's against the religion and allah and okay no it's so you, you are, okay the hadith jesus says he is the enemy of allah and now you just said he's against jesus that's wonderful that's mean jesus is god so now i'm asking you who is al masih al dajjal don't tell me he will be against i'm not i'm not asking you who is against who now who is he I, I already told you. Who is he? What, what do you mean? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? He's a being like uh, he's going to be a being that's going to come. Wh and, what do you uh, mean? Who's being? What do you mean? He is a being. What does that mean? Who is he? I don't understand what you're asking. Do you understand? But you are trying to play games. You don't want to answer. I just told you, he's just a being. He's okay. I'm asking and, you, who is uh, this what, being? What, what, who is this what, one? Who is this one? Where he's coming from? What his ability? What his power? Where he? What he was? He is what? What is he a human being? Son of a human being? No, he's so, uh, guys. Did he say no? We, we, did he, oh, hold on, hold on. Did you just say no? He is not a human being. He is not a son of a human being. Did you say no? Yeah, from my okay. understanding, he's not. So he is a son of who? Like, he is a son of who? He's from what kind? His nature, his, his nature, we, we're not aware of, so we don't know. He's not his what? Nature. What what? His nature, we're not aware of. What do you mean? It could be a hybrid. <laughs> I thought your Allah, He created only certain kind of a creation, angels, human, and genie. 
Yeah, this might be a hybrid between the humans and the jinns. So that's mean there's different creator. I mean creation from different creator because Allah He said in the Quran, He created the following. He created the animals, uh, whatever is in the earth as uh, animals, etc., like grass and water, etc. And then He created Allah some said creatures. He created everything. He said He created everything. So He, yeah. he told us many okay, uh, things. But like he counts. He counts things, things He created. He cr He count the things He created: angels and genie and the human. Yeah, and okay. he also told he never told us some things as well. All right. So where do you get this from? That he is a from different kind, and if it is not a human, you said he's not a human. So what he is? At, I already told you his nature is not known to it. It could be a hybrid. You could. We what, don't know his nature. What do you mean? Where do you get this from? <clears throat> what? Where you get this because, from? Because because. Where do you get yeah, this from? Because, that first, okay, you see, I'm trying to understand how Muslim they think. Where do you get this from? That he is not a human first. Okay, let me find something. Hmm. Some references. So here it says the, the word the jali means um, something that's confusing and uh, vague and ambiguous. So it's, it's going to be a vague um, and it also let me find some more details. Hmm. And what is the answer? I'm waiting for your answer now. <clears throat> I'll find the answer here, Bhakti. No, don't don't go back to me. You see, I want you to read first of all, just to show you how shallow your understanding, and you are far from being mature yet. I'm not insulting you, but did you read even what is in the screen? Yeah, you, that was wrong. You okay. said you said. Can a human yeah. being disappear or dissolve himself? Can a human being dis dissolve? What the, what does that mean? How a human being can do that? Yeah, so he wasn't. He was a human. Okay, he's not a human. But did he appear in the shape of a human? Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we have that he disappear, dissolve like salt in the water. He appear in a shape of a man. All right. Now, did he claim that he is the Messiah? He. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Okay. So. Is the Messiah is a man? Messiah is a man. Okay. Is he a man or not? Yeah, Messiah is a man. All right. Did the Messiah and the false Messiah and Allah, they have this the same exact look? No. So how do you explain this hadith? You are prophet. He is afraid that you Muslim will think that the false Messiah is Allah. No, he, he does for emphasis. He's given emphasis for the people. What emphasis? Who he's afraid, my friend. He's afraid. He's afraid. Saying, I, "If you, I'm afraid that you are. If you are confused about him, know that your God is not one-eyed. About him, who? About the Dajjal, right? Yeah. So the okay. so what? The, what so the prophet what the is different? Doing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what he's doing, he's pointing out a defect within the jar, and he's saying that your Lord is not one-eyed, meaning that uh, he's not, he hasn't got any defects. Okay, what is the defect between what, Allah is perfect? That the jar is defect. Allah have two eyes. That the that the jar have one eye. Uh, Allah right? is perfect in his sight. The jar will have one defective eye. Thank you, guys. So Did he say Allah is perfect in his sight? So Allah, he have two physical eyes. But look what no, what no. your prophet he no, said. Hold on, your prophet he described a man. He did not describe God. 
He described a man. Is that correct? I have told you so much about the Dajjal, Antichrist, that I am afraid you might not understand that the Antichrist is short, hinted, woolly haired, one eyed, and an eye sightless, and neither protruding nor deep seated. Is he describing a man here or describing something else? Yeah, he is talking about the. Okay, so he is describing a man. So let us make it clear. He is describing a man. So why the Muslim will be confused between him and Allah if Allah isn't a man? For many reasons, for many reasons, because he's what going do to be mean? doing miracles. He's going to be doing miracles. He's going to be able to give a life to but the dead. But if you Muslims know, if you Muslim peace. believe, Muhammad is speaking to the Muslims, and if the Muslim believe that Allah is not a man anyway, so how person coming he is a man, you, that will make him think he's Allah. It's possible because many, even Muslims, even at that time. Okay, but uh, look what your prophet said. Years. Your prophet, let, he did not say, me, hey, no, let, you see, let, let, let me show you how corrupt is your logic. Your prophet, me, oh, what you need to say, remember that your God is not a man. So whoever is a man, don't believe his God. That's it. But he did not say that. He said the only difference between them is the eye, which means your God, Allah, he have, he is a deep seat, nor deep, nor deep seated, neither protruding. He have worried here. He, he, he is he is short and he is hinted all this description description is fit exactly with Allah except one thing the eye yeah like I just said to you it's emphasis and uh, and he's pointing out so defect. Allah is a man yeah, Allah does have a defect Allah is no, a man no, no. Of, course, of course Allah is not a man Allah says it clearly in the Quran my friend Your Allah friend. is a man the hadith in front of you what the different by look between the man the man the jal and Allah is one eye there's only the front. There's no, only no, no, how you difference. will recognize. Okay, listen, listen. Why he said to yeah. you? Why? Why he said to you? He is. He have this kind of hair. Do Allah have hair? No, Allah does have hair. He's describing him first. Okay. So, so you do not need to say. You need to know if you are confused. Why he's saying you are confused about him? You know that your yeah. Lord is not one eye. So the only difference between them is what is the eye. Because people will be confused in the end of time. My friend, um, people who will be confused, or oh, what you need to say to them, don't ever believe anyone he come to you as a man saying, I'm God. That's simple as that. <laughs> you do not need to give this description. This is funny. So now let us go back to the topic. You said to me that I did lie when I say that this is the shaitan. I challenge mm -hmm. you, I challenge you to prove to me that this is not the shaitan. You, you first you have to prove that I says Satan. You don't say Satan, and that you're adding to it. My friend, you see, okay, no problem. I will give my proofs. You give me your proof. Give me your proof first, because you are the one who accused me. Show me where in your Islamic religion it says that he is not Satan. The the job. Where it says that he is not Satan? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even mention that he's Satan. So where 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 it says he is not Satan. Why would they say it's not Satan? Okay, you, you said, said he is not Satan and he is you are said he is not a human. So now you have to prove to me that there's a third kind because Allah supposedly created angel, genie, and a human. Can you show me where it says that Allah created other kind which, which we do not know about? <coughs> or you are fabricating things? No, no, there's um just because of his, his, his nature himself, his nature is ambiguous. So that's why. We what is nature hybrid. ambiguous? And you are. So are, are you are you fabricating things in the name of your God? Do you know the hadith where you will travel? My friend, uh, don't tell me. Are, are you fabricating things? No, no. This is deduced from the nature. Okay. So can you give me the proof? Okay. It's, I just have to find it. So. Do you know where this proof is exist? Yeah, exists. Uh, one time he uh, disappeared like in, in the smoke. So that's you what? the proof. He, he appeared he like disappeared a smoke? Into the smoke, yeah. Mm, like, okay. Into. And? So? Also, yeah, that's proof because his nature is not human. Okay. But that means he's a genie because shaitan is made from uh, fire. <laughs> that's what I said. Is it might be a hybrid. No. Hybrid means... What uh, hybrid? This is hybrid. So, Listen, is uh, it the genie is made from fire? Yeah, it's made for fire. Okay, so you confirm what I said, not what you said. You are going against yourself now. You you said you want to show me a proof that he is like a smoke. Yeah. Okay, but isn't it the genie is like that? Yeah, the genie is like that, but 
uh, the hadith also mentions he's uh, he's going to be born, so he's going to be coming from a human family. So what? He will be what? He's going to be coming from like a human family. He's going to have. Uh, he's so going to have parents. okay, guys, isn't it him who said to me that that the jar is not a human? I say it's hybrid. If if you understand what. Okay, I hold on. Hybrid means How he is born I, from a human family, but yet he is not a human. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna explain to you. So because uh, hybrid means I, uh, uh, you you come from human and also a jinn as well at the same time. So one of your parents are are, are a jinn. Anybody understand anything? Human and a jinn gets married, then they give an offspring. So are you saying say, that this guy is a mule? He is half donkey, half horse. No, I never said donkey. Horse. Well, this is what you are saying. You are saying because jinn. this is what the what, this is what the mule is. The mule is half donkey. Half horse. So you are saying to me that a genie, he married from a, 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 a female, you know, a man or a male genie or female a human being or the, the vice versa, have sex together and they have a son who is half genie, half a human. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Mm. So um, do you want me to, let me, okay, let me find the initial for you. Mm, what you will find for me? I'll send it you once I find it. no point you win. Mm, 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 okay. All right, bye. Where by? I thought you would find it for me now. Where do you want to go? You want to have fun? <laughs> it's going to take time for finding it. What? It's going to take time finding it. I've got to open the books. Ah. All right. Okay, well, as you wish, because I can show you right now as we speak a hundred of reference, hundreds of Islamic reference that he is Shaitan. Yeah, I'll find it before you go offline, inshallah, and I'll send it to you, and you can read it out. Why is going to take you forever when I can find it for you in two seconds? Because I never know you. I never knew that you're gonna ask me this question. <laughs> no, I'm saying to you. You see, you are not noticing what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you that in your Islamic religion cult, that the Jal is the Shaitan, and I can prove it very easy. Yet you are saying to me he is not. Oh, well, actually, I think I found it. Just one minute. It's okay. in Ahmad. He says. Uh, this might be one of the proofs. It says um, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the Jal will emerge at a time when religious commitment is low and knowledge is decreased. Mm -hmm. Isa Islam will descend just before dawn and will call out people saying, Oh people, why stopping you from coming out against this evil liar? Mm -hmm. They will say this man is a jinn. Okay, he's a jinn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which means I'm right and you are wrong. Yeah, no, that, no, the point I'm making is... No, 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 the point, saying, you, you are the one who said to me, why well, you are lying, he's a genie, Shaitan is a genie. So you called yeah, me, explain. and you said to yeah, me yeah, you are lying, and you gave me the hadith, yeah, just... which is a proving that I am right, and you are wrong. You said to me, he is not a Shaitan, he is not a genie. I, he said, I said what? to you, uh, is he a human? You said no. I said, he is a genie? He said no. I said, what is, he said, he, may, he might be a hybrid uh, crea cre creation, creation. So now you gave me a hadith saying he's a genie. Can I, can I explain? Explain. So in this hadith, he says he's a jinn, and in another hadith, he says he's going to be offspring of, of parents. So are you saying so, your prophet so, is a stupid? No, no. This from okay. the, from because the listen, listen, listen. The, uh, hybrid. It doesn't he's matter. He is of a spring of who? As long as he is a jinn, he's a jinn. So either you say he's a jinn or you say he's not. Is jinn and a human as well at the same time? No, you cannot be jinn and a human at the same time. What jinn and a human at the same time? What it says that? I just saw he's coming How from you the can parent. be jinn and the human in the same time? Exactly. Have you, have you ever experienced it? You never My experienced friend. it. You can't, so you, you can't are saying, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, this, the, 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 the madness of Islam is very, very, this is what, what, this is the fruits of Muhammad. Look at the confusion. So what you are saying you to me that, the, okay, the father of this guy was a genie or his mother? Uh, one of them, I don't know. One of them. So you must then believe that if a male man have sex with the female genie, yes. they will yes. have a baby genie. 
No, baby hybrid, which is uh, half human. But you are the one who said to me that the child is a genie. Yeah, it's jinn and also human. No, my friend. Hadith. Okay, hold on. The hadith, the hadith you gave me, the hadith you gave me, it says it clearly the word he is a jinn. is not half jinn, half a human. Does it say he is a jinn? In this hadith, it says jinn. And well, there's a thousand hadith other to this hadith. I can show you in this. And I waited for you to search for reference and get yourself busted, and you did it. I just told you the okay. so, if he's, he's so now let us go here. Hold on. As long as this guy is a human being and he is a jinn and he, but yet he is a man, he have the look of a man. So why Muhammad is aware of a or, or afraid that the Muslim might think that this man, he is Allah. Do you Muslim believe Allah is a man? No. Nope. Okay. So why he will think that Muslims will think he is Allah because he would do miracles? Yeah, miracles. Is okay, Jesus did miracles. Yeah. Muhammad supposedly, according to Islam, did miracles. Yeah, he did. So, I thought you Muslim, you don't believe in any man to be God. Suddenly, you Muslims are aware that God can be a man, and you will believe in him. No, there's, there's going to be people that will. Like, okay, hold on, hold on. What is my guarantee? You just said that this genie he come to us in the shape of a man, right? Uh, the what? The Dajjal, the Shaitan. I prove that he's a genie and he's a Shaitan. No, he's not Shaitan. The Jinn is not Shaitan. That's false. Okay, hold on. Jinn can be Shaitan. I forgot. Do you speak Arabic? A uh, little bit. Little bit. All right. There's tons of hadith saying that he is the Shaitan. I can give you an Islamic link. Have endless reference. Endless. What's Shaitan? Huh? Who who is Shaitan? The Jal. The Jal. Okay, go on, show it. <laughs> okay, let us see. <laughs> uh, <coughs> let us see. But the one that will melt in the hadith, just, you show just wait, just that's wait, Shaitan. just wait. That's not Everybody Shaitan. is so, laughing at. Just wait at you and 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 your knowledge. Uh, your Muslims are really funny. Uh, okay. I will put in the screen for you this link. All those reference. Look how many. Look how many. Look, 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 look how many. All of those saying that he is Shaitan. Qal al Hafid. Have you ever heard of the Imam al Hafid in the book of Fatah? Value number 13, page number 328. Speaking about the Dajjal, he is uh, he is a shaitan. The shaitan he come in the image of the Dajjal and he went to Asfahan. Asbahan. <laughs> Here, uh, the Sheikh of Al Allama, Al Muhaddith Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al Muallimi, he said, Fi kitabihi, Al Anwar al Kashifa, page number 134. He said, It is the shaitan. فرأوا الدجال وجساسته وخاطبوهما ثم عاد حالهما إلى طبيعة طبيعة الشياطين من الاستتار وإن كان الدجال إنسانا فلا أرى ذلك إلا شيطانا مثل صورة الدجال. If you are saying that he is a human, I don't see that. I see only that he is a شيطان. So there is tons of reference from your Islamic books, and those are the big scholars saying clearly that the Dajjal is the Shaitan. So what you are saying to me, I'm lying when I say that. Uh, in the Hadith, it doesn't say Shaitan. That's what I was saying. That's false. Yeah. My friend, okay, doesn't say. Oh, hold because on, hold the on. way you okay, see, okay, I'll tell you what. okay. Let me ask you. So, the Dajjal is the enemy of Allah. How make that person enemy to Allah? As level, I mean, 
there is millions of people don't believe in Allah. I am an enemy to Allah. Okay, so how you know that the Dajjal is this person and what is unique about him and where did he get his power? Uh, the one that will melt you talking about, <clears throat> huh? What are you saying? What are you asking? How the Dajjal in your mind, in your understanding, you said he will do a lot of miracles. Where he will get his power from? So Allah will send him as a test. As I think I discussed this with you last time. Hmm. Allah will send him so that the Dajjal is a good person. No, no, he's not a good person. Okay, you just say it. Allah will send him. Yeah, he's going to be okay. um, sent back. Allah, he sent Jibreel. Correct? Allah he sent Jibreel. Is that true? Yeah. Allah sent Muhammad. Is that true? Yeah. Allah sent the Jal. Is that true? You see, you are yeah. the one who said he is sent by Allah. So if the Dajjal is sent by Allah, that means he is a servant of Allah and the true false shaitan is Allah. Let me ask you. Is it true that Allah he said that he is the one who sent shaitan? Um, yeah, he created him. No, did he say he sent shaitan? He sent him to do the work of shaitan. Did he say that? He appointed him, yeah. Thank you. So shaitan at the end of the day in Islam is Allah because shaitan is just a lower level than the big shaitan Allah is the big shaitan and Allah and, and the shaitan is the, the servant so let us say Allah is the name of the king of shaitan and then Allah no, he is commanding the lower shaitan this is what you are saying to me you, everybody heard you saying that Allah he appointed you said Allah appointed shaitan did you say that so yeah Allah appointed your shaitan okay if, if you are appointed by somebody, it's mean you are employed by that body. Is that correct? No, he's not employed. He has so, free will. So what do you mean appointed then? Because if you appoint me to do a job and I'm doing the job you appointed me to, it's mean I'm working for you. Uh, one minute. Let me find the explanation. Ask the, <laughs> ask the alim about this. So uh, what we learn from your call that shaitan is the Dajjal. And this is what your scholars agree with. And you are the one who gave me a hadith saying he is a genie and shaitan is a genie. And you are the so one see, who agreed that shaitan is appointed by Allah, which means he is serving yeah, even, Allah. Yeah, even, even your God allow, allowed evil to exist and it allowed Satan to exist. My even, friend, even the Bible though. says God allow the sun to raise upon the good and the bad. Okay. He, you, al he, you, al no. he allow, allow, uh, allow free will. So people they do whatever they want. So here, do you know? Let me let me ask you. That God, that God of the Bible, created Satan to be Satan, who created him to be an angel. Hmm? That God of the Bible created Satan as an angel or as Satan. He created him as angel, but he knew he's going to be Satan. Mm, okay. So he could stop. Hold on. He could have stopped. Anyone, no problem. No problem. No, okay. Okay. But Satan. okay, God, he can stop me from. Uh, Killing somebody, correct? Yeah. Okay. So according to you, God is a criminal because he did not stop me from killing somebody. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that your the standard you're applying to me is the same thing with no, you. No, I'm not you. I'm not doing that. No. You see, in, in Islam, God he sent shaitan to do the work of shaitan, the verse in the front of you. In the Bible, God did not hire shaitan to do to do the shaitan work. He decided to be, he challenged God. Okay. Did your God did your God uh, create uh, evil? He created shaitan. So yes, he created evil. Okay, and uh, did he also send? But did he create shaitan to be evil, or he created him to be good? Did he, did he send the evil spirit? My friend, to my trouble, friend, uh, you, the, the, the evil spirit there is them. Is this is their desire? If if somebody let, <laughs> let, let me show you let, let me show you how shallow the Muslims it's when they try to explain. Spirit. Hold on, hold on. Every, everybody will laugh at you. When God he unleashed the evil spirit on you, which means you choose not to be with God, so God is not protecting you. This is what it's all it's about. So if okay, I so am not listen, if I am not believing in the Messiah, now the evil spirit of Muhammad will be upon me, and I will be the slave of the devil Allah. 
okay so so listen to this so what's a spirit and why does even spirit in the bible god sends it to people to trouble them well god he sent us down to earth and he said to adam that shaitan will be your enemy and you know he will he will go after your children and you will go after him as a snake so god he you know he punished adam he says from now on you have no protection from me you are by your own and this is the shaitan, he will be your enemy. And the Quran saying the same, copying the Bible. So when God, he decide that Adam don't deserve to be in heaven no more, and sin bring death, he says to him, you go down to earth and death you die. And Satan will be your enemy. He will go after your children and you will break his head, which means you will be enemy forever. So this is in your book too. But the difference is, Shaitan in uh -huh. your book is working as a servant for Allah Not the opposite. Let me ask you when when Adam he broke the command of Allah Is it Shaitan who made him break it or Allah? Uh, so uh, when Adam broke uh, when, when Adam he, he broke the command of Allah <clears throat> Yeah, so when he broke the command of Allah he did it out of, out of his free will Free will? Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Before we go to onto that, in the Bible it says an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Okay. So it, it, like from the Lord troubled him. So mm. an evil spirit that came from the Lord mm. is uh, it troubled. Well, everything him. is coming from the Lord. But let me let me show everybody that you do not know your book and you are accusing your prophet to be a false prophet. Thank you very much. Here you will see in the front of you that Muhammad saying it clearly that Adam is a victim of Satan. But not the Satan we know. He is the victim of Allah. Look at this. This is the hadith your prophet saying. That Allah, He forced Adam to commit sin. Oh, no, and no, Adam, oh, hold on. Everybody, everybody will see, will see what, uh, 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 what it says. Here we go. <clears throat> you see the hadith? All of those hadith are sahih. I'm just showing you a collection of them. Read for me. This is your prophet saying there was an argument between Adam and Moses. Adam was accused, uh, was, uh, was accused by Moses, says to him, because of you, we are of heaven. And then to make the yeah. story short, okay, to make the story short, Adam said to him, are you blaming me that I commit sin for an act which Allah He wrote for me forty years before He created me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how you can blame me for that? You cannot. So do you blame me for what God ordained for me to do? This is the order night of God. This is fate, and your God He repeat that story. Your God Muhammad repeated the story that. Adam he did what Allah ordained for him and this is his fate an act which Allah has ordained for me that I must commit I must commit I, it's not up to me so how you say to me that Adam he did that by free will where do you get this from okay for for many reasons so firstly in the Quranic <coughs> verse we know that uh, Adam Islam he repented he said Rabbana dhalamna anfusana that's not the so story that's not the story because you see you are yeah, so you are you are now accusing your prophet to be a liar correct yeah you know let me finish so no no I, I, i'm going with you because either you say adam have no free will or you say he have a free will so i want i want you to give me the straight answer are you saying adam have a free will yeah you definitely got okay free will. that's mean muhammad is a liar because it's muhammad who is saying that not me are you debating muhammad now no, no, I'm okay. you, you understand no. of the hadith. No, 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 you no, you, I'm not understanding. Here we go. I want you to read the hadith and you explain it to us. Everybody will laugh. Yeah, yeah I'm explaining to you. Okay. The hadith, the hadith, um, first let me tell you the evidence that he's got free will. The evidence is that in the, in the Quran, um, Prophet Adam, he repented. So why would you repent for something that wasn't in your control? You would say, look, I uh, have no free will. There's no, mm. there's no need to repent. Mm. So it shows you that he, he repented from his, his uh, from his mistake and he realized mm. that he made an error. Mm. And uh, so that's everything he's got free will. And this hadith is telling you about Qadr. It's, uh, what happened was Musa, uh, Musa Islam was accusing Adam of, uh, uh, let me see, generation. 
he was saying. So they had an argument. Mm. Here we go. This is the verse you have in the Quran. It's in the Hadith, and Muhammad is laughing at you at your explanation. Look, it says here, "What is your opinion? How long the Torah would have uh, been written before I was created?" Musa said, "Forty years before." Adam said, "Didn't did you not see these words? Adam committed an error, and he was enticed to do so." Do you know what enticed me? Yeah, he was um, um, like, like you know, encouraged kind of thing. What encouraged? Inti inside, who is the one who encouraged him to do so? Yeah, Shaitan. Shaitan? Okay, hold on. Yep. He Musa said, yes, whereupon Adam, he said, do you blame me for an act which Allah had ordained for me 40 years before he created me? Who is the one ordained that Adam should commit sin? And we cannot blame Ad because if Adam commits sin, then we can blame him for the sin. Is that correct? So, no. So no. The thing is, we can't blame him for, Why not? for doing something. Why not? Why not? If he commits sin, I can't blame you for your sin. If I commit sin now, you can't blame me for my sin. Because he's he's gone through the consequences, and there's no need. No, to, no, 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 no. Uh, we can't consequences. All of us, we have consequences. It says you cannot blame me for an act Allah ordered for me. Yes, the, okay. if you look at the Arabic, it says Qadr. So we have a whole concept of Qadr, what's the okay. And First of all, so it doesn't say the word Qadr, and you are an idiot. Where the word Qadr? It does say Qadr. Where it okay. says the word Qadr, where? Let me find one. Hmm. It's in the front of you. It says, قال, قال Adam, فهل وجدت فيها وعصى Adam ربه فغوى? قال نعم. قال فاتلومني على أن, على أن عملت عملا كتبه الله لي. He wrote for me. It doesn't say the word Qadr. But I understand you are trying to say this is fate. And this is what we are saying, actually, that this is about Allah. He wrote for him his destiny. Yeah, he says Qadr. He says, yeah, Qadr Allah aliyya qabla an Qadr, Qadr, not Qadr. It's Qadr. Qadr is different from Qadr. Qadr aliyya. So Allah, he ordained for me. Who is the one yes. who ordained? Okay, what, what Qadr mean? What Qadr mean? What no, 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 listen. The, the root word is Qaf Dal and Ra, so that's the same. It's the same. Uh, it has the similar meaning. No, Qadara and Qadara is different. This is why this, the pronunciation is different. All right, but Allah decreed. Qadara it. can be to evaluate something to say what it is. <laughs> like uh, uh, you know, you can say Qadru had a rajul. Like as example, uh, what his position, his uh, how his value, like. Uh, uh, you say Allah al Qadir, so Allah is the able. So there's many meaning, but the word Qaddara, it's about He or the night fate. Let me ask you. So when a, when a, when a, okay, when a person he commit adultery, is he choosing to commit adultery or it's not a choice? I know the hadith, the 40, uh, everyone has a decree that it's okay. 40. So years. if you are saying to me, we must then believe that adultery is a free will. Do you believe in a free will or you don't believe in a free will? It's free will, but this is uh, part of God, like that. It's decreed for that person, whatever adultery is going to commit. Okay, it's, it's, so how it's, it's a free already. will, but Allah, he wrote for you the fortune which you must commit. For many reasons. So, okay, let me explain. So, Allah has this within His knowledge. So, He knows that it's going to happen. He wrote it down in Lawh al Mahbud. So, this is what we call Qadr. So, He wrote it down and He knows it's going to happen and He allowed that to happen. And He, and, he, and th that's what Qadr is. So, when someone blames you for something that's already ha has happened, then we, we uh, in the Quran, it says that we should always, um, you know, we should get upset of something that's already happened. Because mm. this is it's going to happen anyway, okay. so you shouldn't be becoming sad over it. So it says okay. this in the Quran. But look what it says. It says which is a necessity yeah. must commit. It's a necessity. Necessity must com commit. So Allah He wrote His knowledge, or Allah He wrote destiny. So obviously it can't go against the the plan of Allah. This is another question. Okay, so is it the plan of Allah that He commits sin, or this is your plan? Within the plan of Allah, Allah allowed this happen. This is so another question. Is that is you committing adultery your plan or Allah plan? 
So the adultery, the person does it. Do do, 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 why you don't answer? When you commit adultery, is that your choice or Allah decision? So no, no one can move the hand. Why you don't answer the, me? Either you I'm say yes or that. Is it Allah decision that you will do this adultery or it is your decision? The what do you mean decision? When you when you said decision with Allah. Okay, what when I want to sleep with the women, I am the one who take off my clothes. I am the one who decide to sleep with her, and I am the one who go for it. Is that me doing that or Allah? He is making me doing it. Oh, that's you doing that, of course. This is not the question. Is it me doing it by my choice or Allah making me doing it? You're doing that by your choice. Okay, but look what it says here. It is a necessity to commit. You have no choice. What is the choice? Yeah, it, it, Allah is speaking. So let, let me see the hadith on your screen. <clears throat> So it says, very Allah speaks the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which uh, he of necessity must commit. The adultery of the eyes, the lustful look, and the ears, the adultery of the tongue, and the heart, the yearns, uh, which the past may or may not mm. come uh, put into effect. Mm. So all this time you were answering me without reading the hadith, now you decide to read it? No, just reading it again. Okay. So now what is the conclusion? In the past. What is the conclusion? <clears throat> So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Allah, no one can move their hands. No one can desire without Allah uh, allowing that person. So no, no, no. This, 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 this is another question. This is another question. This is not the. This is not the question. question. Okay, hold on. Okay. Let me show everybody that how Muslims always they lie, and they speak against their own Quran. Hold on. You keep saying to me, nobody can do anything without the will of Allah. Nobody can do anything without the will of Allah. Nobody can do anything without the will of Allah. Now, of course. Is it the will of Allah to commit sin or it is the will of you? So the two types of will, when we, when we talk about will, there's this two is another question. Of, uh, you know my question, and my question is so clear. When I commit a crime, is it Allah forcing me to do the crime or I am doing the crime without Allah involvement? Yeah, you're doing the crime on your own. Allah's not uh, making you do it. All right. It. I will go and see what Muhammad said about your lies. Here we go. We go in the Quran. <clears throat> We found this on the hadith first. Your prophet saying the following. I'm going to stay for another five minutes, uh, about five, ten minutes. No problem. You can leave if you want. No problem. People have enough fun in case you want to go. You will see here that when you are just a child, Allah he command to order four things his provision in this world his conduct whether he will be happy or miserable and he will be beside whom there is no true God fairly one etc so Allah he write the destiny of you when you were a child and this destiny you have to do as Allah he said do you agree with that or not uh, yeah of course Allah's gonna write this okay yeah. so I grow up and Allah he wrote for me when I was a sperm that I will be a criminal is that the destiny of Allah or this is my choice to be a criminal so within the decree Allah give you Allah give you multiple pathways okay you you see, you let me let me uh, 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 excuse my language let me hit you in the face here we go yeah this is here we go you are a liar and you are a certified liar and you deserve to be spanked in the face is that your uh, prophet you're saying the following read carefully that when you are when that uh, 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 when when the 42 night pass after the semen gets into the womb Muhammad he think the mad Muhammad think that semen start and stay inside the woman Billy for 42 nights. Look at this. Allah sent his angels and give him the shape. Then he created his sense of hearing, sense of sight, his, his skin, his flesh and his bones. Then he say, may the Lord would be male or female and the Lord would decide as he desired, 
as he desired and the angels then put down also and then say may Lord what about his age and your Lord decide he is like what he will like and then he decide whatever he desired to be written down but look what it mm -hmm. says in this following hadith I just showed you this one so we can read the other one this is Sahih Bukhari so you cannot say it is weak or this is reje rejected it says here Muhammad is swearing by Allah First he explained how Allah created you and then he write your deeds he write down your deeds and you are the one who said to us It is you who chose Allah. He just know the future. Correct? Okay, look what it says Muhammad is saying Swearing by Allah that one of you One of you He will do the deeds which is going to in the character of people of paradise so much that there is nothing except a cubit between him and paradise but then what has been written for him decided his behavior and he started doing evil deeds catarizing or sorry in the character of the people of the hellfire and then he go to the hellfire so why are you lying to yes. me yeah so what, what has been he says here what has been written Will be decided for him what 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 has been written so the question that happens now is the question is uh, what has been written or what allah has written mm. allah has written this from his knowledge so from his knowledge you've written that he's uh, going you, to be you see how stupid you because are look it says it says what allah has written will proceed yeah of course it's okay it's, so it's, the guy he is doing that the god would without, without allah written he was doing the deed of uh, of heaven <laughs> but what allah written will change it no, no, it doesn't say. Look, you, read it carefully. Read carefully. You are a liar. You have no shame. And then it says, "And him and paradise." But but then, what has been written for him decides his behavior, and start doing the evil deeds. Who is the one who will decide his behavior? What is written? <laughs> Yeah, I have to check the Arabic. Okay, good. Really go, 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 go. You are just a kid. You see, I'm being patient with you just to show show people example of the stupidity when somebody decides to be stupid. This is what happens when you speak to stupid people. I have to check. The second he is in the corner, I have to check. Anything you say to them, I have to check, which means I'm not going to answer you. Don't get me busted. No, you are getting busted. Because at the end of the day, it is what Allah wrote for you will decide your behavior. It's not what you want to do will decide your behavior. And the ver and the hadith is so clear. And this is Sahih Bukhari. And you cannot say it is weak. Allah is the devil and the devil is Allah. That's what Muhammad is saying. Why this poor person, he did all his life working the deed of paradise and then because Allah, he wrote for him, he will go to hell. He go to hell. I mean, this is not fair. He control, he decide his behavior. And the opposite goes for the one who was working the work of hellfire. Muhammad, he said here, and one of you may do the uh, the do the evil deeds catarizing the people you know in the character of people of hell and hellfire and then so much to the, look him how much evil he is until there's nothing between him and and, and one cubit and the hellfire door and then what has been written for him decides his behavior what's written for him decide not you decide who is the one who wrote Allah? That is the program. That is the software of Allah. So don't play games with me. First of all, he called me to show that I am lying, that this is the Jal is not the shaitan. And then the fool, he himself gave me a hadith saying he is a shaitan, he is a genie. You look in the internet and you start reading, but it's too late.
Bingo. He just like, oh, it says genie. Do we have any other Muslim? Translation is, uh, is it, uh, isn't it book? What? Translation, it is what? Oh, hold on, hold on. Translation wrong, it is book will be upon him. What book will be upon him? What are you talking about, you crazy idiot? Where is it says book upon him? Here we go. This is the Arabic. فإن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى لا يكون بينه وبينه إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار كتاب كتاب is what Allah wrote for him. This is what the kitab that the angel he wrote. You forgot his destiny. Who is the one who wrote the, the, the destiny? Allah. He gave it to the angels when he was a baby. Read the hadith. The angel, he asked Allah what he will be. So he will write for four things. His lifehood, the date of death, and his deeds. Do you see it? Whether he will be good or bad. Whether he will be in hell or in heaven. And then his soul will be breathed into him. Islam is a religion of no religion, <clears throat> which means you do not know what this cult is about. Muhammad is like a guy. He was standing and then the earth underneath of him start separating two tectonic plate and then the earth is spread and Muhammad legs starts stretching so now one one leg is in China and one leg in USA and what is between is hell and the Muslim try to understand his religion with all this madness how you can understand this man the Muslim believe that everything in the hand of Allah okay that's good well, Christian believe that everything at the end of the day is controlled by God. I mean, if God, he don't want anything to happen, he will not let it happen. But this is not what Islam teaching. Islam teach that everything bad and evil happened is by the will of Allah. Allah, he wrote that. <clears throat> anything you do is from your God as an example if Allah wants Nobody will be live in different religion. But Allah have different plan. <clears throat> Allah, he want them not to believe in him. If Allah had willed, he could have brought them all together to the guidance. This is why in the Quran, Muhammad says that Allah told him, are you going to guide the one who Allah misguide? Muhammad even, Allah fighting with him. He's saying to him, are you going to guide the one who I did deceive? So who is shaitan then? Hmm? <clears throat> Look at this verse here. And whomsoever Allah will guide to Islam, he expand his bosom 
into the surrender Islam is a surrender and whomsoever it is his will to send astray he make his bosom close and narrow who is the one who sent you astray Allah not the devil do you see it who is the one who deceive Allah the verse in the front of you any any Muslim with the beard would like to call us anyone I find one of the there's some verses in the Quran is kind of hilarious even though O Muhammad desire their right guidance is still Allah assuredly will not guide him who he mislead I mean what is this is a joke Muhammad he want to guide them Allah don't want them to guide what is that but the one who made this verse here is Muhammad why Muhammad is trying to explain why people don't believe in him he want to he want them because he's asking them to believe but they don't want he, he blame Allah he says well I want them to believe but Allah don't want them to believe is that a comedy You see it? Comedy show. In chapter 13, verse number 27, it says, The one Allah he deceive as he will and guide as he will. The Muslim they, they translate the word deceive as astray. Read it. Lu Allah send he will astray. Who is the one who sent you astray? This is the will of who? Is that your will? Is that his will or the will of? No, it's the will of Allah. Who Allah guide? Is that the will of the, the one who convert? No, it's Allah. So Allah is the one who deceive. Allah is the one who guide. As simple as that. It's not you. And the verse in the front of you, and this is your Muslim translation. If you don't like this translation, we can change it. Let us see different uh, Abdul translation. Let us see Yusuf Ali. <clears throat> the unbelievers say, "Why not a sign sent down from his God?" The Muslim they say, "Allah, He sent many miracles." Here we go. It's in front of you. They, they did not. Allah is a mute. Allah is useless. Allah is, is disabled. He cannot do miracles. Muhammad, instead of giving them a miracle, look what he said to them. Say, Allah told me, say to you, say truly Allah, leave who, uh, to astray whom he will. False translation again. It doesn't say astray. It says in Arabic, you dil, you dil. What the word you tell me in Dalal? Deception. Lost. Allah is the one who caused you to be lost. And Allah is the one who guides you to be guided. So there's no free will. Forget about Abbas. He's a kid. I mean, isn't it enough, guys? Leave this guy alone. He have like a thousand video people making fun of him. Leave the poor guy alone. I don't think even he can sit in the front of his kids and tell them what's happening there. 
Chapter 16, verse 93, the same story. Allah is the one who send who he will in deception, and Allah is the one who guide the one he will. <clears throat> See it? All over the Quran. So where, where is the where is the free will? In chapter uh, 40, verse number 30, uh, 74, look at this committee. Look at this committee. And they take partners instead of Allah. Okay. They say they have filled us and we use not to pray to anything before. Thus does Allah send astray the disbelievers. This is how Allah misguide them. How Allah misguide people? By make them go astray and worship idols. Do you see it? Any Muhammadan? All those verses is a joke. Actually, Muhammad, and we mentioned that before, even a child who is an infant, he might go to hell. Why? Because Allah, he wrote for him his destiny before he created him. <coughs> So because destiny is a clear, you see, even it says the book of destiny. Do you know what even destiny mean? It's in the front of you, it says destiny. So destiny, either it is, you say that God, he have uh, knowledge of your destiny, or God, he make destiny. As an example, we Christians, I believe in destiny in some way, but totally different from Islam. As an example, God, he made a destiny for a man to be born. But man, he made a destiny for himself to die. How is that? God, he did not create man to die. He created him to live in heaven. Let us say he's born from the sand. He made him from sand. This is the first man created from sand. But man disobeyed God. So he earned his death by sin. So maybe the man he did not choose to be created. I can say this is kind of destiny. But God did not make man do his sin. That was not a fate written by God. That was a choice of the man. God, he said to Adam and to Eve, that you and her, your enemy will be the devil. That is kind of a destiny as a penalty for their sin. But it's Adam who brought it upon himself. But he did not ask Adam after that to be a sinner and to continue by his sin. This is why the Bible is so clear that God, he sent his only begotten son for he loved the world. Not because you want to deceive the world. <clears throat> right? You know, uh, if you remember, the hadith where Muhammad speak about the poison he ate. Is that destiny written by Allah? Did this guy he just said to us nothing will happen except by the will of Allah? He said that, right? Okay. That's mean the one who killed Muhammad is Allah. Because even the women who put poison for him, 
she said to him if you are God God will not let you die if you are from God if you are a false prophet you will die and we will get rid of you and this is exactly what happened <coughs> we have a Muslim he called himself moose hmm. mr. moose okay <coughs> يا أهل الكتاب لا تعلو في bunch of kids. I bet you even you do not know what you are what he's saying. And by the way, thank you for reminding me of this verse because this is the verse will prove the Trinity for you. You are an idiot. Here we go. Let me open this verse which we were reading for us, not you. I mean, playing recording. <laughs> Stupidity. Chapter 4, verse 171. This is what he was playing for us. This is the same verse proven to us. The same verse says, don't say Trinity is the same verse saying Trinity is there. Look, this is your God. This is your silly God. This is your silly Muhammad. And this is your Quran saying Christian don't say Trinity. But look what he's saying. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, he is. And here they are. The word was only. It doesn't say that in the Quran. He was. Okay, what he was. He was a messenger. Okay. Number one is a messenger as what? As a man. So let us put number one next to it just to make the Abdul happy. Number one, he is a man. Bingo. Number two, he is a spirit. Let us highlight that. He is a messenger from Allah and his word. Actually, this is number two. And he is the word. So this is what? This is number two. Wonderful. Let us put two in the top. Let us make it red, maybe to make it more clear. Okay. And now, and he is a spirit proceeding from him. This is number three. How the three can be one. Yet, the same verse saying don't say three don't say three became one but the same verse says that jesus is three and he is one in the same time he is a man he is the word he is the spirit do you see it by the way this is not our trinity we don't believe in such a trinity now this is this the trinity is not this but I'm just showing you how stupid the logic of the Quran. If you don't believe that one can be three, how Jesus can be one and yet three in the same time? Do you understand? So the Muhammadan who called us to play for us this verse, thank you very much. You just spanked your God and gave us a tool to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. It is not only possible to be three and one. It is possible with the Christ to be three and one. Do you see it? He is a word of God. He is a spirit of God. And he is the man. Three and one. Word, spirit, man. <coughs> And to make the Quran more funny, the Quran saying to us, don't say three, but Allah always, when he speaks, he's saying in, in, about himself in three ways. First, he introduced himself as Allah and the Rahman and the Rahim. Read, 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 read and love. Each time Allah, when I talk, he says, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. 
Why three? Is Allah three and one or three and one and one and three or what is that? Which one of those is Allah? They will say it's one. So why he is presenting himself in three? Why the perfection number of definition of your God is a three? When a Muslim he do ablution, he have to wipe his hand three times. His nose, he put water three times. His ears three times. His feet three times. What, what, what the three times? What about four, four times? What about fifth, five times? Five times will make you cleaner. So number three, according to Islam, is the number of perfection. You will be pure if you do it in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. When Muhammad he enter a place, he say "Assalamu alaikum" three times. Why? Are you deaf? Are they deaf? When Muhammad he say a sentence, the last sentence in any speech he say he repeated three times. This is why we saw where he was speaking about Adam debating Moses. So the Prophet says, so Adam confuted Moses and he repeat that three times. Is that true? Yes, this is true. Here we go. Let me prove it to you. Isn't it enough to say it once? So what does that mean? Why he repeat always things at three times? <clears throat> Hmm? Any Muslim knows? Why Muhammad? He keeps saying the same thing. Can't he say, well, Adam, he won the debate. Why he need to repeat it three times? If you type in the in the site of the hadith, the word three times, you will not believe it what you will see. Look at this. This is not me. I just type, I just typed in the search engine the word three times. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah, S A W S F M G O O O O F M station, like to supplicate three times. What? And he asked Allah for burden three times. Huh? The Prophet performed wudu three times in each lamp. Three times. Three times. You see, everything you do three times, anything, anything. His hands, his arms, his feet, his face, his nose, his ears, three times. Hmm? Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Three, so, uh, that, that sounds like the recording stuck. Uh, stuck. Three times. He repeat what? Guys, did you see what I'm saying? Whenever the, the prophet he speak, he talked, he repeated it three times. Do you see it? He repeated it three times. Why? Anything he say, he have to repeat it three times. So they say to you, you Christians, you should not believe in the Trinity, but Muhammad, he lived the Trinity. And I challenge any Muslim to tell me what this is three times is about. Are you saying that there's nothing is perfect without number three? Your God Allah is multiply of number three, 99, which is a multiply of the age of Jesus, X3. Jesus lived in the earth 33 years, X399. What is this?
and I just you know guys whoever ask Allah paradise three times he go to paradise <laughs> that's all what it take a Christian prince he will go to paradise before I die I will say Allah give me paradise Allah give me paradise Allah give me paradise and Allah will send me to paradise do you see it how easy this is uh, if you, you, mind? you know even in the train station you have to go and uh, take a ticket in Islam now let's say paradise treat paradise paradise Give me paradise. He go three times. Don't say it four. Four, he will send you to the second floor. And why three times will get you will take you to paradise? Give, you tell me. Allah will not take you to paradise if you say four times. What about six times? Eight times. Only three times. It's like that the story in the cartoon. If Tahya Sim Sim. You know the story of uh, Ali Baba and the uh, and the uh, and the cave where he have his uh, open the cave he say that three times and the cave open the door the rock open what is that hmm And by the way, it looks like dealing with Allah is a lot easier than dealing with your wife. You might ask your wife 100 times to do something, she will not do it to you. You ask Allah three times for paradise, you go, that's it. Doesn't matter who you are, even if you are a Christian prince. Just three times. Well, you know what? Christians who believe in the Trinity, they never come with such a lie that if you say to Jesus three times, Give me a paradise, you go to paradise. Why? Is that the key word? Is that the password? And why does God, he listen to your request only if you repeat it three times? Allah is deaf. Like let us say there's a guy he was asking Allah to say to go to paradise. So he was he was dying. Allah, take me to paradise. This is number one. Allah is dying. Take me to paradise. This is number two. And then he said, Allah. And then he died. Oh boy. He's almost there. He's almost there. I mean, come on. He did not say it three times. This is the logic and this is religion. You know what? I remember once... <clears throat> I was trying to purchase an airline ticket brother first time did not work second time did not work third time did not work then I said oh Allah make it happen and then I tried fourth time it did not work fifth time it did not work I said Allah make it work six time seven time and they told me then that they are not accepting my credit card so it had nothing to do with Allah <clears throat> you know what I think YouTube they should design a special like bomb for the Muslims which they can like three times you know what I mean Muhammad he said if a person of you go to the bathroom he have to shake his penis three times what the penis have to do with the three times even the penis three times what about four? Oh boy. <clears throat> uh, 
anyway guys don't forget to subscribe this is why we don't have many too many people here not many people knows about this channel but you know i don't know people are lazy we keep saying to them subscribe and they are not really subscribing just tell your friends <coughs> according to this ver uh, uh, verse uh, <coughs> yeah the paradise speak absolutely paradise not only speak paradise speak and heaven speak and hell speak you see if you remember when uh, uh, Allah he started throwing people in the hellfire then the the hellfire will keep saying to Allah hell mean mazid if there is more what if there is more <laughs> yes in the heaven uh, in Islam heaven and her hell they speak you know even death will be slaughtered look at this the prophet said the people will be thrown into the hellfire and the fire it will say are there any more and then Allah tell Allah he put his foot over it over what the fire Allah have a foot as you know and then the fire will say Qati Qati which mean enough enough do you see it so yes hellfire speak and even heaven According to Muhammad, that the reason we have hot summer because the door, uh, uh, the hell, will ask Allah to breathe. So Allah, He asked the hell to breathe because it's too hot. So hell opened the door of hell during the summertime, and this is why it gets hot. This is the explanation of Muhammad. And if there is any Muslim, he says to me, "I'm lying. I can show you the reference." <clears throat> Let me see actually the reference uh, better because they might say where, where did he get this from? You know them. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see. <coughs> Here we go. This is the hadith. Uh, the hellfire complained to Allah. Oh Allah, my parts are eating up each other. <laughs> so he allowed it to take two breathers, one in the winter and the other in the summer. And this is the reason for severe heat and the better cold. Where you get this from? You can go to weather.com. The science of the prophet. Why the summer is hot? Because the hellfire complain. And Allah, he allow it to breathe. Do you see it? This is not my statement. This is science. Why the Muslim don't make a video about the science? Huh? This is the explanation of Muhammad for summer and winter. Which, by the way, proven to be true according to science. This is very scientific. <coughs> anyway, guys. I'm losing my voice uh, thank you for being here don't forget please to tell your friends that we are in this channel for now until further date we have many channels we need to fill them up we use them as backup you know this one have like what seven eight thousand which is very tiny number uh, and actually I keep the number up here just to maintain to see what is the change because we are trying to bring people here to this channel all right so tell your friends and let us always learn something good. I hope people they are taking reference. 
and learning how to deal with the argument which Muslims they come with Muslims the first thing they do they try not to give you an answer the second you say to them something is you know like embarrassing they say to you I need to check it out that is mean I'm leaving do you remember the sheikh who called me from New York and I showed him Aisha she said that the about the, ver the verses of a breastfeeding he said to me there's no such a <laughs> verses <laughs> so I said to him are you saying Aisha is lying I said the brother I'm going uh, now I, I have many questions and I think it's uh, time now to go I have many questions so why you are calling me isn't it you you are we are we are talking me and you because you have a questions and I have a questions right we can watch the debate is there anyway guys I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and I hope Muslims will learn that Islam is nothing but a collection of contradictions it's not even a religion Islam is not a religion cannot even be qualified to be a religion it's a collections of many cults and other belief some from the Hindus some from the Buddhas some from the Persian some from the Aramaic some from the Christian some from the Jews some from the Sabian some from every some And not to forget some from the Arab, which is what left from the Kaaba. This is why this man he kept the Kaaba, he kept the black stone, which is nothing but paganism, was exist before Islam. Islam is a continuous of paganism, but under different agenda, under different God. And the God here is not different from the previous God, no. But the but the God here, the, the God before he have three daughters. Now Muhammad he killed the three daughters. That's all. His his God is not he don't have daughters. His God don't have angels, they are females. Those are the angels of Allah who they are females. Which means Muhammad, he took like a tree, had many branches, and he started cutting some branches, says those don't belong to Allah, and this is my Allah. And he used that Allah just for his private part purpose and for his pocket purpose. And this is all cult leader what they share. They don't worship God. They worship their penis and their pocket. They have nothing to do with God. God is just a name to use so they can fool the naive one. Anyone, anytime, now, before, in the future, he says to you, he speak for God, but yet he want to sleep with your women. And yet he ask you for your money, claiming that if you give him your money, you are forgiven. For sure he is the devil and he is a scam. That is Muhammad. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. I will try maybe tomorrow to be live on air. We will see how much snow we have outside to shuffle. Who want to help me? Who want to help? Anyone like to play with the snow? Let us see how many from Indonesia they will enjoy the snow. <laughs> you know, I'm sure if I bring somebody from Indonesia here, he will stand outside for two seconds and he will say, I want to go back to Indonesia. I want to go back. <laughs> You know, it's very funny how people they say we love the snow. It's so beautiful. Yes, it's so beautiful. I love it, especially in Christmas time. This is true. But it's so beautiful. But <laughs> you know, when I went to uh, when I went to Philippines and uh, some other Asian countries, they told me, "Don't come now. It's cold." I said to myself, "It's cold." Is it cold? <laughs> cold there is like summer here. Honestly, the cold they speak about there is exactly as our summer here. You don't know what cold is, my friend. Oh boy, you have no idea. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm sure they will be enjoying it to watch it from inside, not from outside. 
Yeah, well, the problem, my driveway is long, you know, like I have to clean a lot of snow so I can get with my car out. So if you don't and if you don't uh, clean the snow right away, uh, then it turned to be an ice and then nothing can break it. It became like a rock. It became like a rock. Actually, once uh, I opened the garage door and I was going back. Do you know, I don't know what they call them. Those ice columns, the one they come from the roof. You know what I'm saying? It was a huge one. And suddenly I noticed it before I go back. Otherwise, my, my car will be destroyed. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, so it can be really, and not to, not to forget to mention, I mean, uh, the driving, how hard it is, especially there's some people, they do not even know how to drive in the snow. Things go crazy. You can go actually watch in, uh, in YouTube uh, a funny driving in the snow. And then you will see what I'm talking about. But, you know, I have I have to admit that the best time in the year is a Christmas time. You know, regardless of the snow, but the snow make it more beautiful. Uh, but the Christmas time is really beautiful. I have a very special time for me. Uh, you know, uh, all, all, anything have the name of Christ as a special. This is why I encourage you. You see some people, they say, um, like the the instead of using the word the Christmas, they use the word X ex, Xmas. This is something being created by the atheist, so you will not remember the name of Christ no more. So you don't say Christ because the Christmas is coming from Christ. They want you to forget about Christ. Obama he decided to say holiday. Happy holiday. It's not a Christmas no more. He decided to do that. He worked for eight years. But let me tell Obama and those who like Obama. The Soviet Union, he forbid them even to celebrate for a second anything have to do with the Christ for almost a century. And the day the Soviet Union collapsed, our churches is full again. The same day. Not a century after. No, I do not decorate, you know, because every day for me, for me, every day is a Christmas. But when I say Christmas, and because this is what people know what Christmas is about, but for me, is every day is a day of, of the Lord. Actually, this is what it is. When you say the calendar, what the calendar today? Today, today is November 9th, 2019 of the Lord. In the days of the Lord. So every day, Muslims, atheists, Hindus, athe everybody. He go, he live, he die. His record, his, his salary, his computer run by the Lord day. This is the calendar you are using. They try to run away from a Christ, but you cannot. Your calendar work by his name. Well, you should fight it. You should not say this is a winter festival. This is not winter festival. This is a Christmas. You see, this is this is how they try slowly to make you forget what you belong and where you belong. This is the idea. Holiday and no, say Christmas. I go to uh, stores. I say, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy Easter. All right. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Princess. Uh, but uh, for sure the Christmas is very nice time and it's very nice because it is time where people they share not just people they enjoy an occasion you see I saw a lot of great Christians in USA who they volunteer to feed the poor who volunteer to buy gifts for children who volunteer to buy clothing who volunteer even to pay rent for other people who volunteer to give even they bring people their houses if they find some some people amazing Christians you see America have two images the image you see in TV shooting bars but this is this is the bad side of America the druggy the alcoholic 
this is the the crazy side but you don't see in TV the good news usually because it's, it's not interesting I mean they they interesting for them to show to show you in today Friday there's some shooting will happen somewhere why where in the bar well it's a bar right but in America there's a lot of a great people actually American are as I know as number one people who donate to charities so they are amazing people but always the news they present to you the news the criminal news the news is not meant to, really to, to tell you good news this guy killed this guy this guy he's arrested actually I don't watch news because it's disgusting what do you see in the news they will not tell you something will make you happy what you see is something disgusting always this guy his house is burned this woman she died in accident this guy he murdered that guy why I want to watch this news I don't want to see it right uh, uh, Muhammad Qasim he is saying this is encourage him in knowledge of opposition you are right <laughs> I can see your opposition, my friend. It's working very good. Your opposition is perfect. I mean, have you ever heard of an opposition? He proved me right. What kind of opposition this opposition is? All Muslims, they say the same. Why don't let your sheikh call me? I forgot you are the one who brought me your sheikh before. Right, and guys, I was going to leave. What happened? Oh boy, man, I hate you. I hate you all. <laughs> I buy a huge freezer to feel like winter. Well, last year we reached almost, I think, 34 minus 35. So, your freezer will not do the job. There's no freezer can make it minus 35 or 34 minus not zero right now outside what is the temperature it is minus four right now it's minus four only which means it's not really not bad very nice just minus four only all right now soon we will start seeing minus 10, minus 16, minus 17, 18. Have fun. What state? My state, uh, very unique state. Yeah, always when there is cold, usually co uh, the cold comes from the, the air, the wind. You know, the more you are exposed to the wind, the more it's going to be cold in your area. But actually, I bought a corner lot from Allah in his paradise. And now my I have 70 versions. They are preparing the villa for me. And they are wiping the tables of the house with their panties. All right? And they are cleaning the dust from the windows and the curtains by their eyelashes because they are very long it's going to be very beautiful in the villa which Allah will give me in heaven there's trees grape only grape you know and the women there they will serve me a drink which is wine mixed with ginger Anyone of you try to mix ginger with wine? Anyone knows why Muhammad he promised them ginger? <clears throat> Who knows why Muhammad he promised the Muslim ginger in heaven? Wine mixed with ginger. Ginger. Anyone knows? Muhammad Qasim, Mr. Opposition. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know? Where is the opposition? Why Allah He promised you wine with uh, ginger? 
okay you see the Arab uh, they live in the desert and ginger is the only uh, drink like their tea is their traditional tea this is the only drink this is the only plant they have in the ground to make a, a drink from so he knew that they are attached to this drink it's like tea or coffee today and he knew they cannot live with it so Muhammad he promised them that in the heaven you will have a cup which is mixed with ginger you love ginger brother I will give you ginger and in Arabic it's called Zanjabir which is not Arabic word by the way Zanjabir is not Arabic and there is a and there is a spring of water in heaven it's called Salsabil anyone knows what Salsabil does Salsabil this is the fountain of youth you drink from it you stay young forever and by the way this is why I never get old there's a prophet in the Quran his name Al Khadr Al Khadr he was attending the, the funeral of Adam and the funeral of Noah and the funeral of Moses and the funeral of the Prophet Muhammad and until now is alive and his name is mr. green why because he drank from the fountain of youth <coughs> let us show you the hadith so people will not say we are making things up <coughs> All right, here we go. So simply hear the story that Allah, he sent Moses in a mission to find the prophet Al-Khadr so he can learn from him. And then Allah, he told uh, uh, Moses, take with you a wheel. And then when he, take, he took the wheel with him, Allah told him, when you lose your wheel, this is where you will find Al-Khadr. So Moses keep walking, keep walking until he arrived to a fountain, spring of water. It's called... Ma ul hayat between two bracket. This is the meaning water of life. And then some of the water of, of the water of life sprinkled on the dead fish or the dead whale, and the fish come back to life. True story. Am I saying something false, Muslims? The story in front of you. The story in the front of you. Hmm? Yeah, and this is appear in many places. Here we go. This is here in more details. This hadith. Let me give you the link so you can read in your own time. Who won the hadith? Hey, opposition, you want the hadith? Muhammad Qasim? Opposition. <laughs> I want to I want you to see I want to see how you can oppose this opposition huh hmm. here we go so Moses he went along brother and then look what it says here look what it says they arrive at the rock there was a water spring called Al Hayat which means the water of life and none brother none come in touch with that water but became a life brother do you see it are you there opposition now either you say that muhammad is a liar or you believe in this for sure you will say i believe in this because you are opposition <laughs> unbelievable okay true story so some of the water that spring fall over that fish so it moved like what the fish was dead but some of the water brother fall you know what tomorrow I will, I will make this one is my topic for tomorrow huh 
Yeah, uh, the high bird. Do you think this fist was was made from high bird? <laughs> high bird. <laughs> You know, it's my mistake. I did not ask him what hybrid mean. It's my fault. Anyway, I think I'm a little bit uh, tired. So anyway, guys, it's time to go. Otherwise, the water of the fish will sprinkle all over you or in the street or in the graveyard. And then all the weekend zombie and will come to us. Thank God that this water is not available. Because I have a friend He's afraid now that his mother-in-law who died last year, his wife, she would put some water over his grief and his mother-in-law will come back. That's not right. You know? True story. All right. Thank you all for being here. It's better to go. Otherwise, I will never leave. All right? This time I'm leaving for sure. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean, and we believe in him and his name. And his name is holy. And his glory is amazing and every name every human every creature would bow down in front of him for he is the king of the kings and time will come and those who don't believe they will be sorry christ is lord islam is false and see you soon bye bye